Grace and peace be yours in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I want us to hear that again. God saying, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Think on that. The Lord God does not see things the way we see things. And the Lord God does not function the way we function. And it strikes us as strange, but whenever you hear that, God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, I want you to think this phrase, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our thoughts are so mired in so many things. Competition, comparison, how am I doing compared to you? And I want us to hear a phrase that everyone here says, and we always think it's the kids, but the adults say it too. And those words are these. That's not fair. <laughs> Anybody ever say that? You look around the world, you look at what's going on. Sometimes you look at other things going on in your own personal life. And you don't have to be 13 to say this. I'm 60 and I still say it. That's not fair. Now when I think about demanding justice, I want you to think about this for a minute. Do I want from God justice? The answer to that is no. We got that? No. And here's the danger. I can start to think, and I, maybe you think this way too, we'll think to ourselves, I'm actually a pretty good guy. Is that biblical? It's actually not. And we think I'm, pretty good, I'm a pretty good guy. If God would treat me the way I deserve, wow, is that missed it, right? What would happen if God treated me the way I deserve? <laughs> Judgment and wrath. So when God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, your ways are not my ways, we say, Thanks be God. And in Matthew chapter 20, Jesus tells a beautiful parable. But I'm going to say something. It's, kind of, it's, it's a beautiful parable, but it's a parable that kind of catches me off guard a bit. I want us to think about what he said. A man owns a vineyard, and he hired workers to go work in the vineyard. Simple enough. And he hired some of those workers to work early in the day. If they go work one day, one denarius, that's the normal thing, a denarius a day, fair enough. But he needs more workers, so he goes to the third hour, hires some more. The sixth, the ninth, the eleventh hour. Now here's a funny phrase. Why does he say 11th hour? Here's what we need to know. In those days, the work day was from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The whole day. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the guys hired early in the morning went out there at 6 in the morning. Third hour means 9 o'clock, then at noon, then at 3 o'clock. When is the 11th hour? 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And he doesn't say to any of those people what he's going to pay. The first guys, you work a day, you get a denarius. So all the other guys, if you work for me, I'll pay you what's fair. And they go. If you work till 6 p.m. and you get hired at 5 p.m., you work for how long? One hour. And I want to say something about this parable. Jesus is not talking about a union contract. <laughs> This is not about labor relations, and it's not about economics. 
The invitation to serve in the vineyard is the invitation to be in the kingdom of God. So now think about who those people are. To be inside the kingdom of God. I want us to get this. The call of God is always a call of grace. You and I do not deserve to be called. We're called because God in Christ has adopted us, right? No other way. I'm not here by my works or my merits. By the way, not just me. I you. In Christ the crucified, you have been reconciled to God. And some of us have been here forever. And some people have come later. You've noticed that, right? Now here's the challenge. I am thankful of this, but I just want to notice it. I have always grown up in the church my entire life. I do want you to know, when I was six years old, I was not a pastor. <laughs> But when I was a little child, my parents had us in church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So that means I'm pretty holy, right? <laughs> <laughs> or else God knew I needed it. But here's what happens. We start to think, well, I've been around here forever. I'm one of the good guys, right? And after you thought. And then we look at some other people and we think someone, some of them, are the bad boys. You know what I mean, right? And the bad boys, sometimes we say, that we'll say it politely, some guys are stinkers. And we start to wonder, can the stinkers be saved? And what's the witness of Scripture? Yes. 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 Now here's the challenge of the parable. Some people have lived away from the church, have lived a life of rebellion, true enough, they lived the way they wanted to, and late in life received the call and grace of God. This is the challenge. Are they welcome in the church? Yes. Now we know the answer, right? Do we do that? I've been in the church my whole life. The world would say he's been a good kid. The Bible says all of sin and fall short of the glory of God and are redeemed by the blood of Christ and by nothing else, right? This parable says that some people were hired at the 11th hour. That means that up to the last minute, God is still pleading. Come, come to know my son, Jesus the Savior, still begging them, come into the kingdom. The parable's not saying everybody's saved, that's a different topic. Some people choose no, that's on them. But those who come are what? Welcome. Welcome in the kingdom of God. And this is the part that catches us, or many of us, the guys who were there all day grumble. I've been here forever. I've served on five different boards and committees. <laughs> By the way, I'm glad you did. <laughs> I've been here 60 years, and that guy just got here. This is not the only place Jesus talks this way. There's other parables. Jesus tells a parable where he says, a dad has two sons, and he tells his sons, go work in the vineyards. And one of the sons says, I'll go and work, and he doesn't go. And the other one says, I won't go, but he does. Isn't that the human mess? And Jesus asked the Pharisees which one of them obeyed, and they give an answer. And here's the crazy thing, Jesus never answers. You know why? Because the church is full of son number one and son number two. The parable of the prodigal son, we always focus on the prodigal who leaves. He comes back, it's the older son who stayed who's upset. What will he do? Isn't that a challenge? What will he do? 
I personally have lived this parable. Really, I've lived this thing out. Renee and I were at the seminary in St. Louis, the holy city. <laughs> you forgot to say that, but anyway. When I say seminary, I want you to think the word poor. All right? And we had heard that the president of Concordia Publishing House was getting ready to retire. Concordia Publishing House, the publishing house for our entire denomination. He was going to retire and move, and in order to move, he wanted some seminary students to come help him with the move, and he would pay. So I'll ask you this question. Head of a publishing house, how many books do you think he had? <laughs> Here's the follow-up question. How heavy is a box of books? And by the way, why did he pick the biggest boxes he could find? That's what I wanted to know. Six of us agreed to go. Six. Now you guys have moved many friends, right? By the way, that's why I don't run a truck. I don't want you to call me. <laughs> You've moved many friends and the pay is always the same, isn't it? What do you get paid? Pizza and beer. I mean, we're Lutherans, right? Pizza and beer. He said he was going to pay us money. And he fed us lunch. All these the six guys, all close friends. We knew the guy. That's how he asked us. Two of us showed up one time. I was one of the two. Show up on time, there's six of us coming, two of us are there. We start to do the work, heavy work. I kid you not, we said out loud, this will not be like the parable of the workers in the vineyard. <laughs> we thought of Holy Scripture. And two of those guys, two more guys came mid-morning. And we by then were upset. We said to their faces, this will not be like the parable of the workers in the vineyard. <laughs> But two guys were later than that. And you guys, you guys have some friends there, the latest ones to show up ever. And they walk in very glibly, like, hey, I'm here. And we're like ready to kill them, you know what I mean? But they show up after lunch. Now we're very angry. And we say again, this will not be like the parable of the workers of the vineyard. We do finish that whole move. And at the end of the day, the president of CPH said that he had budgeted $1,200 to give us, and divided by six, we would all get exactly $200. And then he said these very words, just like the parable of the workers in the neighborhood. <laughs> I will tell you this, that was very difficult. Because theoretically, we can say, I get it, the newcomer is welcome. It was another thing to have served the back-breaking work early in the day and to watch the other guy get paid the same amount. So here was my choice. I could be irritable about his generosity to those guys, or I could gladly receive the highest amount I've ever been paid to move anybody. <laughs> Which did I choose? Well, I'm human, I chose a middle path, right? <laughs> a little, little this, a little bit. I want us to get this. Jesus says the gift is the same, one denarius. Why is the gift the same? Because the gift is the same. What's the gift? Eternal life in Jesus Christ. Eternal life is the gift. And some of you have served for 40 years, and some of you have served for 60 years, and some people found the church two weeks ago, and the gift is the same. And Jesus says, will you begrudge my what? Your generosity. That's who he is. Our gracious and generous Lord in Jesus the Savior. Amen. We stand together. May the peace of God pass us off and understand and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.